God, this takes me all the way back to the very beginning. And I was trying to make the smallest little two pill in the world. And this goal is going to make a, a two pill the size of two packs of cigarettes. And uh, I built it, but the thing got so hot because there was just, there was no room and everything was crammed in on top of itself. Man, I, Danny called me, God, a million years ago, it seems like. It says to me, man, BBI, can you, uh, can you build me a little one pill modulator? <laughs> I said, sure. I finally get around to building it and I'm like, man, I had to go get out of the book. <laughs> so long as I've been a, built a one pill. I mean, I built a ton of these when I first started, but I've done a two pill in shit a year or one pill in a year. <laughs> get the book out and I'm like, um, okay. So I need this for the input tune. For the... Danny, here's your little one pill, buddy. And uh, we're going to talk about the one pill first. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the uh, other base unit here when we're done. Danny ordered up just a little straight little one pill modulator. We got a little 2879 down in there. Um, we're going to run it on 14 volts. We're going to hit it with the uh, Striker 955 with a 5 watt slug between the dummy load and uh, this little bad mammer jammer. 1000 watt slug and peak, 1000 watt slug and average, 5 watt slug in reverse. Hold on, boys and girls, we're going to make that needle swing now. Head oh, wadi oh. We're going to get about 200 out of this little one pill. Now, let me shut it off. Head oh, wadi oh. That's the hardest Dan, Danny's ever going to hit this thing. I'm I'm swinging a striker into this thing, for God's sake. It's 200, 250 watt max box, right? Okay. Hello, what are you? Here's our input tune. Hello, 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 hello. Below half a watt. Oh, open that all the way up. Hello, 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 hello. Below a half a watt. Perfectly acceptable. Okay. Now you've got that out of the way. Slide that wide to the side, baby. Danny, here's your other matched unit to it. Now I couldn't put the numbers where they were correlating with each other because I built this one first, then I built the one for Derek, so I built the two six pills together. And this one started first, then I built the other six pill, and then I built your one pill modulator. So that's why there's a number difference. 1934 and 1936. That other six pill, which I built right after this, got the 1935 number. But your six pill is done. Now, I want to talk about something. Your fan makes and breaks you. I'm here to tell you. And uh, I decided the other day that I was going to do me some fan research. But I wanted something that's quiet. I moved at least 50 CFM worth of airflow. And I came down with these computer cool or these computer fans are called Corsairs. About $17, $18 a piece. And this is what I'm going to use from now on. They're super quiet. They make them in all colors. They've got a high CFM flow. And uh, now in that MOSFET box, I've got these big thick high flow fans. I like this thick. These Corsairs are about that thick. The MOSFET box, those turn and they make about 101 CFM or 105 CFM worth of airflow. It's almost twice the amount of air movement, but it shows because of the noise. It's in a mobile unit. It's going to be sitting way back in the back of somebody's seat. But this guy, he's going to be talking on a radio next to it. So everything that comes out of here from this day forward is going to have the high flow Corsair fans in it. I feel they're a better product, and that's the direction we're going to go. Well, brother Danny. Let me pop the lid off this and we'll get the uh, looking on the inside and we'll get to testing it. Well, Danny, this is the inside of your uh, straight six. Now, guys, I've started doing this hand tie wire because zip ties are easy and to me it's all becoming about the art. I got myself fairly well established in the products that I'm producing at the rate that I work and the things I want to achieve. And everybody's now starting to get it. And for me, it's now no longer just about cranking out the boxes or trying to get those bona fides set down. It's about how beautifully matched I can make the inside of the box. How much meticulous detail can we pour into the unit? And you know, my dad was an aircraft mechanic for 
my entire childhood, and he retired doing that. And he spent hours and hours and hours hand tying this. And we always had a bale of the cotton wax tie cloth laying around. And he'd tie stuff from time to time when I was home. And, you know, as a kid, you get to go to his job and get to go look at stuff. And I always thought it was really pretty the way they would break the wire out individually and how they'd lay the wire together and how the spacing of the ties, all done by hand. It's a lost art because everybody just wants to grab a zip tie and just slap it together and be done with it. Well, I'm not that guy anymore. I am uh, Jack's screaming sense, quoting out Fight Cup here, Jack's screaming sense of wanting to be the meticulous guy. It's absolutely not necessary. It's something I want to do because I think it looks pretty. So now every large wire bundle that we got and anything I build, I'm going to hand tie and see what I can do with this. Because I want to stretch this art out myself. I want to improve my skill set as I increase my builds as I go along. Because let's face it, boys and girls, if you guys have watched any of my videos, you all know I have built the 2879 in about every kind of board layout configuration that can be done. Um, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying that's what I have done. And uh, now I'm wanting to take it to the next step. And for me, the next step is the neatness inside the cabinet, which for me has always been paramount because beauty builds power. But to be able to enter something new into it and take the time to put something in there like this right here, if we did this with zip ties, it'd take me about 10 minutes. This took me two hours to hand tie this and just get it all looking perfect the way it is. To me, I'm an OCD guy and that's beautiful. Just saying, just pointing it out. Now Danny, you got sideband delay. Of course, the amp is always running in class B, bro. Always. It's the only thing that does is control the capacitor back here on the relay for how long the relay stays closed. Now, Danny, just like in the previous six bill, I am uh, getting away from using the big toggle switches on the front of the boxes. To me, they're ugly um, and dangerous and not right. So, you got yourself a big ass contactor, homie. So, when you turn this thing on, don't jump a foot because it's going to go. Thump. Thump. Just letting you know. I'm not going to spend a ton of time looking at the inside of this thing. I put the tin on it. Danny, you're going to be able to look through the holes and stare at it for now until the end of time. High flow, coarse air. Bumpity bump. All right. Let's put the tin on it. Let's get on with the testing. Let's give you a quick look at this real quick, Danny. That's your blue. Just looks sick. I freaking love it. Okay, let's test this on the gun. Danny, my buddy. It's been a long time in the making, and I appreciate your patience, bro second. So the striker, 5 watt slug in reverse between the amp and the striker. Passing through the amplifier, got a 5 watt slug in reverse back from the bird 10,000 watt dummy load, 1,000 watt slug in forward in average, and then we've got ourselves the 1,000 uh, watt slug in PEP and 1x at the moment, we're going to go up to 2x. I keep doing that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to just key the radio the striker, give you a baseline reference for this video. Hello! Audio, 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 BBI. BBI is a mud duck. BBI is a mud duck. Okay. So we're swinging about 80 watts into this puppy, boy, uh, Danny, and we're gonna just cruise this son of a gun for a minute. Hello in the corner. Hello in the corner. That average meter don't move worth a dig, and it's a striker. It's okay. We're gonna hop over to the Connex, but we're gonna get our average bird out of it here in a minute. I wanted to show you the input tune for this thing at oh and oh and oh and oh and oh and oh. It's absolutely awesome flat. But oh, audio. Beautiful input tune. We're going to take a meter and go up to 2x, and we're going to leave it there for the duration of this video. So 2x. Now, if you're new to the little uh, the BBI game here, I'll show you how to read a, a bird real quick. We are going to be reading. 
the 20 there, right here between the 20 and the 30, or the 40 and the 60, it's a thousand watts. Okay. This thing in 2x, full deflection is 2,000 watts. So it's 1,000, 12, 14, 16. All right? Okay. We're going to get about 12 at a BBI. 12, 13 ish with 80 watts of drive. And Danny, we're going to kick it with this. So we're going to kick it with this into this, and then we'll go over to the Connex and we'll show you the thing doing about 600 bird, 5, 600 bird. So let me hook up the coaxes for that, and we'll get right on to the show. All right, so we hooked up our little three-foot jumper. Um, let's talk about jumpers for a minute. I apply myself to the 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 16, 18, 19 foot rule. It's not that critical. If your builder has got salt in his shorts, um, you can make it so the input tune into each device is relatively low enough that the length of the jumper isn't hypercritical. Going back in the Wayback Machine, everybody was matching each box to each box with the coax length. And we've overcome that. There's certain amplifiers that are built where they've got coax on the inside of the unit. And so the coax on the outside of the unit is hyper sensitive to how the box is going to be tuned. At least at the metering point that usually is a line section on the back of like a 32 or 64 pill. There's coax on the inside to carry the RF around. So let's just say like Skullcracker, for example. Great box, built by good people, performed very well, um, was very tolerant to volts and put up with a lot of, of abuse. But a, a lot of people had a hard time getting it square in their head that the Skullcracker had coax on the inside of the amp. So you couldn't take like 12 feet of coax and hook it up to the back of the box and have the meter read properly the line section at the back of the cabinet because there was already another three feet of coax or two and a half feet of coax between where the line section terminated on the, on the, on the back of the cabinet. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't build like that anymore. I'm just saying it's still out there. But for my stuff, uh, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. I can put a one foot jumper or a two and a half foot jumper there or a three foot jumper there. And the metering is just stay the same. It all has to do about following the bird meter when you're setting a unit up. I've got this piece of coax that comes from the bird meter down here to the workbench is like 11 feet. And it doesn't matter if I put a 12 foot length in there or a 9 foot length in there, it still reads the same. If you got the capacitance tuning on the inside of the box, correct. Jumper length, yes it is important, no it's not hyper important. Just saying. So for everybody that needed to know or want to know, because I get asked about that all the time, I, I go by the three foot rule. It's one foot, three foot, six foot, nine foot, 12 foot, so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. Okay, Danny, we were showing you that this thing was doing about 12, 13 and some change. At oh, still getting our 12, 13 and change, going through the little one pill. All right, kick on a little one pill. At oh, audio. Hello, audio. We're going to get 16 and just a little bit over. Driving it with the little one pill modulator. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, BBI. With that being said, because I'm taking the striker and running it into this and kicking it into this and then I'm just going, we're still not seeing the bird average. And it has to do with this radio. We're going to jump over to the Connex. We're going to take a little one-pill modulator out of line. And we're going to drive this puppy up. With 125 watts from that radio or 150 watts from that radio, we're getting the same amount of performance wattage output from this. We're going to see uh, 500 to possibly 600 bird out of this. And this is not in line. So, Danny, what I'm telling you is that we can loaf into this just like you wanted to. You wanted to be able to take a 30-watt radio, hit it into this, and get... Pretty close to your max performance out of that. That will happen. Just give me a second. We'll reset one more time, and then we're done. All right, Danny. So we got the Connex hooked up. And we're going to see if we can get the right pitch to come out of my voice. 
to drive this thing to its max bird. We're going to see anywhere from 400 to 550 out of it, depending on if I can get the pitch of my voice right to make it work right with the mic to make the radio push this thing hard enough to get it to dance. Oh, I hate doing this. Okay. 1,000 watt slug average, 1,000 watt slug PEP. We're seeing 125-ish, 130-ish over here, and we're seeing about 45-50 over here. Take that up to 2x. Got it. Just before I ran out of air in my lungs. 500 plus bird. And it can get there if you got the right pitch with a push pull radio. Whew. Everybody right now in video land is going, what in the hell's he doing? Look. Striker is hindering me a ton. And I'm getting ready to change that. That's in the process. But in the same breath, I've got to get this out to the customer. He's already waited long enough for it. So I have to demonstrate on video what the unit is doing. We're setting this aside because that puts out the same amount of power almost as that. So I can't drive that into that. That does not put out enough to drive this. That's the sweet radio to drive this amplifier, but it does dick for bird. So <clears throat> we're going to go here. And as you can see, when I was... Oh, working the scales with my lungs we were seeing 16 and change out of it so we were getting the same level amount of drive or the same amount of output power and this is putting out about 25 30 more watts the point is amigo you take a 30 watt radio and you run it into something like this you're gonna see 16 to 1700 out of this your bird wattage is right and the amplifier is golden my friend we're done Wrapping this puppy up, we're in top shape. Throwing in the soldering iron, and I'm walking away. I'm going to go get this thing over to UPS right now. Because they close in about 25 minutes. And we're going to get this sucker out the door to you. And uh, I'll have a tracking number for you this evening. Danny, thank you very much for your patience. I can't stress that enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brother, it's on its way to you. Gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Come check us out, www.bbiamps.com. Of course, you found me on YouTube, because if you're watching this video now, here you are. Click subscribe, please. Gentlemen, I appreciate you all. I see you. I got to get, I got to hustle.